Angela was born in 1928. She was raised in Stamps, Arkansas by her paternal grandmother. Her and her older brother, Bailey, were abandoned by their parents when Angela was just three years old. The influence of her grandmother, whom she called Mama, helped shape Angelo into the woman she became. Throughout her childhood, Angela was constantly surrounded by racism and experienced suppression. It was what she did as she grew older that helped her overcome the suppression that defined her society of the 1960s. Although people came and went in Angela's life, and the idea of home changed several times, only one theme remained consistent in her life. Books, literature, and the power of the written and spoken word. All vulgarity is vulgarity. And, and if you mean to demean a person, to make her or him less than whole, anybody could say it. You could say it from a robot. And it means that this person is not worthy of my concern. Angela wrote her first novel, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, in 1969, the biography of her life between the ages of 3 and 17. This novel shares her devastating experiences as well as her growth. As a child, Angelo instinctively looked for comfort in human love, thinking it would satisfy her, but later found that comfort only came when she gained independence. After Bailey and Angelo moved to St. Louis to live with their biological mother, Angelo is raped by her mother's boyfriend, Mr. Freeman. Before the pain she experienced, she truly believed that Mr. Freeman loved her and enjoyed the time she spent with him. After the rape, Angela didn't speak for five years. I was a mute from the time I was seven and a half until I was almost 13. I didn't speak. I, I had voice, but I refused to, to use it. <clears throat> My grandmother, who was raising me in a little village in Arkansas, used to tell me, Sister, Mama don't care about what these people say. You must be an idiot. You must be a moron. Mama don't care, Sister. Mama know when you and the good Lord get ready, you're going to be a preacher. The power of words to Angela was greater than anything else that influenced her. By the age of five, Angela was reading impressive literature by Kipling, Poe, Butler, Thackeray, and Henley. But most important to Angela was William Shakespeare. She describes him as her first white love. The Harlem Renaissance that lasted into the early 1930s undoubtedly influenced Angelo and her writings. The Renaissance was the beginning of people finally taking literature written by African Americans seriously. Because Harlem Renaissance artists worked toward achieving dignity and respect in a racist culture, it paved a way for Angelo and her literature. Through her life, Angelo made many references to literature and the artists that influenced her. Angela's multiracial society of the 1930s naturally developed itself into a hierarchy causing victims of oppression to second-guess their worth. As a young girl, Angela was brainwashed by what society told her was beautiful and right. Though Angela's childhood environment filled with the cultural dignity and the pride she learned from stamps helped her grow, she was not limited to what her surroundings taught her. This allowed her the opportunity to mold herself into who she wanted to become. At the age of 15 years old, Angela decided that she wanted to get a job, but not just any job. The job she set her mind to was one that only white women had obtained, yet she didn't allow that obstacle to stop her. Angela wanted the job of a conductorette on the streetcars, and because of her strong attitude, she was successful in receiving it. She pushed through the negativity that was put in her way and didn't allow the words of other people to stop her. She knew that it was possible. It is not impossible to become Martin Luther King, to become J.F. Kennedy, to become Mahatma Gandhi. It is not impossible to become Barbara Jordan or Eleanor Roosevelt. That is not impossible. It's within your grasp. Absolutely. Those were human beings. At the age of 16, Angela questioned whether or not she was a lesbian. Thinking it would help her solve the situation, Angela sleeps with a young man and realizes that the experience wasn't what she hoped for. This encounter resulted in Angela's pregnancy and a child that she says was a blessing. <laughs> After writing I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, Angelo continued writing her biography, resulting in the publication of 11 more novels, including A Song Flung Up to Heaven and Even the Stars Look Lonesome. She also wrote poetry, one of her famous poems being Still I Rise. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, 
I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, Yeah, I go right.